thing we got to talk about is these two. You know, two of my favorite people in the world. I've known Meredith since she was in middle school. And every time I see Meredith, I think, She wants to see you. She's glad to see you. She's happy to see you. And there are very few people in the world that have got that quality. And Meredith, I really appreciate it. You know, every time I see you, I think, wow, I can't wait to see you. John, that's a different story. <laughs> John is my business partner. He's the guy that walks in my office every day and says, Dad, what are we going to do today? And you know what? That's a tough question to answer. <laughs> I go, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> and you know what? John's always got an answer. John was born in charge. The great story about John is that when he was, how old, girl? <laughs> two? <laughs> One? Two. We're driving out of the driveway. Carol says, we're going to go to the club, but the first thing we've got to do is go to the post office. We're driving out of the driveway. John's in the back seat, in the car seat, going, <laughs> we're turning the wrong way. we got to go. We're going to the club, remember? John's in charge. That's, that's him. And he's in charge of me. So, but you know what? You guys are going to have a great life together. Now, tomorrow is an incredibly special day. It's September 29th. It's the day that Carol and I were married. Really? 34 years ago. Wow. <laughs> you know what? It's going to stay a special day for a really long time. And we're so proud to have you guys married on the same day we were married. It's really a special event for us. And all because of football. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was a big part. I agree. <laughs> It was also the only day, the only day, that was a Saturday that didn't interfere with the aeration of the practice ring. <laughs> and the growth of the grass for the winter. Not that that's important, but it's really important in Capital City. <laughs> and costly. Yes. Got one funny story to tell about Meredith. Meredith knows I like to tra play tricks on her. So we were having Mother's Day lunch, and there was a wedding going on. And I said to Meredith, did you realize that there was a tent that they put out over the water at Capital City Club? <laughs> and Meredith was like, no, that can't be possible. She immediately ran out the door and looked at the tent. <laughs> no, really? We are so glad to have John and Meredith in our lives. They're great people. We look forward to a happy, full family for them. I remember when Carol's father got up at our wedding and gave a very short toast, but it's a toast that stuck with me. And he said, may you be blessed with many children. <laughs> we have been blessed with wonderful children. Jess, 
John are wonderful kids. We are so proud to have them in our family. And may you be blessed with many children. <laughs> last week, two days, I've gotten to meet Tyler's friends and talk about great people. I mean, everybody I've met has been wonderful and I look forward to a future relationship with all of them. All of the groomsmen in this group I've known for a long time and every one of them, from little kids, said, <laughs> they're great people they've, they've always been part of our lives and I'm looking forward to having them as part of our lives again so I look to my wife Carol who put this party together and as she said close with one note to you guys from a famous poet, and I hope I can do it well, but I'm going to try. Oscar Wilde said, may your marriage cup brimeth with love forever. When you're right, excuse me, when you're wrong, admit it. When you're right, shut up. <laughs> now, I think we have got some guest hosts, some guest toasters who are going to join us here soon. But in the meantime, Bart's going to walk around and uh, introduce some folks who want to give some toasts. I'm very happy to be here today to congratulate my brother and his beautiful fiance Meredith. I always believe that there's someone out there for everyone, and tomorrow I think John has found his soulmate in Meredith. First time I met Meredith, we were kids. We were small, I don't even remember, but I do remember John was so stricken by her. He said, he told my mom actually, he said, She's the one. And that's when they were like 13. He's like, I'm gonna buy this beautiful necklace or earrings or something from Tiffany's and like, I can't even imagine doing something like that when I was 13. But that's how you knew it was the real deal. And so tomorrow, I would wish the two of you the greatest happiness for the rest of your lives. It may come with a mix of good and bad times. That's inevitable. But they're only there to test you and your love for one another. So be true to each other and never stop believing in yourself or one another. This toast goes out to the beautiful bride, first and foremost, Meredith, and my, the handsome group, <laughs> my wild brother, John Millie Brunson. <laughs> Here's to you both. Raise your glasses. Woo Two beautiful souls who have lost their heads, or who still have their heads, but who have lost their hearts to each other. Oh, oh that's great. <laughs> it was like yesterday. It was two hours ago when I was playing with Meredith and Holly and Julia and Meredith and then Nikki came along and I was there with them and they were playing dress up. It was just little girls playing dress up and had their makeup and they were very serious about their bridesmaids and you know, playing their wedding and and then you know it's now, it's today. And it's just it seems like it was just I guess like two hours ago that Meredith and you were playing dress up and, wanting to find your, your prince charming. 
and it was so cute, and you did have like such great relationships with, and with Holly and Nikki and all the other girls to follow. It was really special, and now that I see that you are growing into the most beautiful young woman, and one of my favorite stories about John is when Meredith was growing up and she was in middle school, like, like Bill said. I love the story about John that he came home and he said, Mom, I have to go to the mall this weekend. And little boys don't ever say they have to go to the mall. Right. And John, he said, he told his mom, I got to go to Build-A-Bear. And Carol was like, why do you got to go to Build-A-Bear? Because I got to build a bear for Meredith. <laughs> and this bear that Carol took his her son to, to Build-A-Bear, is sitting on Meredith's suite in her bedroom right now. This little bear that with a little heart on it that John did. And then apparently a couple months later, he comes home and he's very serious and he's still, you know, four foot ten. <laughs> he's like, Mom, I'm very serious. I need to talk to you, right? And he said, Mom, I'm gonna grow up someday. I'm gonna grow up someday and I'm going to marry Meredith Bullock. Right? Is that true? And I remember John like, being young and going on hay rides. And he was, you know, then they all went off on their separate ways. And then one day I was in my garden, and here comes John Miller. And I remember John Miller as a young, a young guy. And now he's like this grown into this handsome young man. And I give him a shovel, which we all know John doesn't like to do stuff like that. <laughs> but he helped him. And they just hit it off again. And you just, you know, you've, you've come back together. And as a mother, it's so hard to, I love, like, to have my little girls. And, oh my gosh. And I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm handing her over tomorrow to you. And I just love you, John. Mm -hmm. I love you, <laughs> So, I wish you nothing but the best. I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Do we all love this man? Do we all love this man? Yeah. And I couldn't speak for a long time, but I won't, I promise you. Thank you. I'm going to flash you a picture.
play that so we can hear the whole thing. Yeah, rewind, rewind, rewind. Can you rewind? For breakfast, I was How do I give a toast? <laughs> the those of whom I have not met, my name is Cooper. <laughs> and I'm married to John's dog. <laughs> my mom and dad are be with them. Oh. I'm down on a farm right now. <laughs> <laughs> but mom and dad, hurry up and get home. <laughs> By the way, can you send some treats to the farm? <laughs> or maybe a doggy bag? <laughs> Uh, if you guys, since everybody here is from out of town, uh, there's a store in Buckhead called Pots and Pillows. <laughs> I mean, you know, the wedding's not till five. I'm just saying that if you want to go shopping, it's the old money in Pots and Pillows. You want to get a family discount? Yeah, yeah. Eric yeah. uh, can give you 2% off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a That's a Anyway, wedding day discount. We may go to three since it's her wedding day. Howard, you cannot run from political office. No, not after. Uh, not after. Uh, anyway, I just want to really say again to Carol and Bill, you guys have done an amazing job this evening and uh, thank you so much and uh, for everything you all have done. All I can say is that little girls are so cute and they grow up and they become so wonderful and we moved here a long time ago, and 20. the first day we were here, we met Meredith. Meredith. And, Meredith. and my daughter was a few months older, and she couldn't pronounce her name. So forever, it was Meredith. <laughs> to this day, we know her as Meredith. And that was what we could say. And all I can tell you is that she was a wonderful, wonderful girl then. And we saw the, the, my daughter, Holly, and Meredith grow up together, see each other every day. And she took care of the, we We were just up the block. And as the little sisters grew up they would come up and we were part of all of that as as a way of growing up and then by the way michelle rearranged the house so that we have a girls play day at their house and we had a whole house the, the, so there was a stage so they had performing arts and they and they had and, you know I'm, I'm gonna say this but they actually had a fire pole so that they could go from one floor to another down the fire pole and, and escape and from one floor to another and it was the kids place and and we were part of growing up with these girls and little girls become wonderful human beings and wonderful thank heavens for little girls and i feel like i have been a part of the the growing up of wonderful little girls to become great 
people, great human beings. And I am so proud to be here today to see this. And by the way, I've got to spend time with John, and both of us have work to do on our golf games, by the way. <laughs> but we had a wonderful couple days, and I mean, John and I really got to know each other on on the golf course. We, we both have work there, but, but we had a great time, and I am so proud that little girls grow up to be wonderful human beings, and I couldn't be more happy for my Meredith, who is, is with John, and together it'll be a wonderful future. So here's, here's the future. So me and John obviously go back a long way, and I'm going to tell some funny stories about John, and we're going you know, to move on. But it's like, what? Mom and what Jesse were saying, when they were in middle school, we didn't even know what electrifying was. But, it, I mean, we hung out every single day. Like, we, Monday through Sunday, like all week. You know? It's so like from seven years old up through elementary school to middle school to high school. And so, like, you know, when you get home from school, you run up, you know, John lived right next door to me, right next door to Brookhaven down there in East Brookhaven Drive. And I, I get home from school and be like, God, I'm gonna go see John play some football in the yard, stuff like that, right? <laughs> so we came home and I was like, I'm gonna go see John. So I went up there, like 13 years old, you know, I walked down John's basement, and I get down there, I looked left at his mirror, I'm like, damn, guys, I have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna step some out. I was like, God, not today. <laughs> but um, but seriously, I mean, what? They were best friends, and I, I know I'm the first person to say this, but best friends since middle. I mean, they were. They were, I mean, as middle schoolers, they were great. I'm a middle school teacher, so I know what electrifying looks like a middle school cousin. I'm telling you, they were great in middle school. But um, um, another story about John, when we were kids, like whenever, 13, 12, 11, something like that, on Christmas, at like 6 o'clock in the morning, this man would get up and walk down to my house, no shoes on, barefoot, come knocking on my door. At like six morning on Christmas Day, and be like, Where's Ben? Where's Ben? My dad would be like, It's six in the morning, dude. What are you doing? But um, just like everyone's been saying, I mean, Sammy's known, my girlfriend Sammy's known Meredith for under a year now, and she's welcomed her with open arms all week. And she's been, all she's talked about all week is how excited she's been to hang out with you. And you're so great, and you're amazing, and you're perfect for John. John's a great guy. I mean, this guy's handled so many curveballs that's been thrown at him all his whole life. I mean, and it's just been so great. So, I mean, you're perfect for each other. I love you both very much, so I hope you both the best. So, thanks. 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 Our whole life. It, we, Meredith and I, we've, we've had our ups and downs, and but we've had more ups than anything else, and I've never seen... Meredith be so happy with anyone else besides John on her side and I remember Meredith one day coming home. She goes, Oh my god, oh my god, I'm like Sterling. I was like, What? Like, what's, what's up? She was like, John and I have a song. I was like, no way. This is amazing. She was like, come on, come on, we have to go to the computer room, we have to learn. To this day, any moment, Meredith goes, go. I know it. Okay. Yes. Go. 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 I'm in trouble. I'm an addict. I'm addicted to this girl. She's got my heart out of knot and my stomach in a whirl. Even though I set up Connor, she's all I want more. I mean, what's not to do? Day, like, it's like, hey, I 
the song. And I was like, maybe I could fix something with it. So, my little dorm room came up with little lyrics to change into your song to nowadays. So, if I messed up, I'm sorry. It's been a long night, long week. But, <laughs> go! <laughs> it goes, John's been playing too much Fortnite and married chicken wine. I've called so many times, I swear they're going mad, and that cell you were er is going. Everybody <laughs> <laughs> knows Meredith's terrible with her cell phone, so it makes perfectly sense. <laughs> That's all I got, but the more she Thing was this man was out in a lightning storm on the boat 
with a pineapple cup with a pina colada in it. It was just like, it was just like you in heaven. Literally like six pina coladas down and he was like, no, you can't track me. Let's go. <laughs> what I mean, um, you know, is seeing all these guys and all these girls, you know, Jillian, I love you. You know, Meredith, Sterling, a little yeah. longer. Hampton, Bart, you got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, seriously, man. Y'all you know, are going to be you know, so happy for you. I mean, through all the drama, through everyone's, you know, everyone has tough times in life. But, you know, y'all are going to be strong. You're going to be a great family. I'm breaking down, so I'm going to pass this off. But I love y'all. I'll always be here for y'all. I saw a tear in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Meredith and I have known each other for a very, very long time. Um, and the type of woman that you're marrying um, is one that I think we must have been about seven years old. And she had never eaten an apple cider before. The biggest, the biggest eater you'll ever meet, or at least she was. And I remember sitting there, and Meredith and I were hungry, so my amazing mother made us a snack, and it was apples with peanut butter. And she didn't cut the apple skin off because we were seven years old, so we what? Um, and Meredith looks at it, and she's not really touching it, and I'm like, what are you doing? And she was like, I don't like the apple skin. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, that's the best part of the apple. And she was like, I don't like it. She was like genuinely afraid of it at this point. <laughs> I look at her and I'm so mean, and I literally go, man, if you don't eat the apple skin, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, I could tell that she was so scared, but without any hesitation, something that she was so scared of, which seems so dumb now, but something that this amazing woman, girl at the time, was so scared of, without any hesitation, she did it because that's how much our friendship meant to her. And that's the type of woman that you're meeting. <laughs> she would do anything for you, and she would do anything for any of us. Um, and like I said, I'm going to keep it really short, but I think that something that little just describes the person that she is even today. And she actually ended up really liking it. So. <laughs> To follow all of these good toasts. <laughs> so you won't. No, I'm gonna follow. That. Okay. Okay. I'm a freshman, sophomore in high school. Um, at that point, we became best friends, and then went to college together. Joined the same fraternity. We were roommates, and now we work for the same company. So we get plenty of each other. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this short, but. I've seen John at his absolute best and his absolute worst. <laughs> and I'll say that Meredith brings the absolute best out in John. And there's no question about that. Anyone here that's known John through the years will tell you that he is a different person. <laughs> I don't know what you do, Meredith, but good job. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is George Bullock. I'm also known as Uncle George, Eugene, Blue Tongue. I answered all of those. <laughs> you know, for as long as I can remember, um, when there were birthdays or holidays or any card appropriate times, I would always send cards to my sisters. And I would address each of them, and I'd say, to my favorite sister, don't tell your other sister. So tonight, with all due respect to Jilly and Sir Fry, I want to propose a toast to my favorite niece, <laughs> 
<laughs> and John. May you have everlasting love from Deb and I. Here, here. What other things are there? Lovely evening. Thanks for having us. I came here. My husband had just died. I was distraught and lonely. And all my children live here. So I said, well, it must be okay there. And I've been greeted well. I've made new friends. The friends' deaths have been wonderful to me. And John and Meredith have showed me a new way of living here and the other girls. But you know, I had three daughters. And my husband always wanted a son. And if he could have picked one, it would have been John. Aww. And he's the son I've always wanted. Good luck, I love you both. time today and yesterday and uh, Meredith I have to tell you that uh, yeah, my, my oldest daughter Sally was born uh, just a few months after you were and um, and so that's that holds a very special place in my heart um, I got to know a lot of uh, the groomsmen and they're all really good guys so. I gotta tell you that uh, they're good folks and uh, you're surrounded by very good people. And it's been a long time since I've seen a couple that appears to be in so much love as you two are. So good luck to both y'all. And uh, I will tell you, a toast that I heard, right, which was never above you, never below you, but always beside you. Good luck. Uh, wow. We're fortunate in life to meet people who change the trajectory of our lives and the path. And your dad actually did that for me by having a hand in introducing me to Mr. Ward. And so while I haven't known you for that long, I feel like I have because as we know, you know, men like to talk about the weather, correct, George? Yeah. <laughs> and of course, their daughters. So, in sports. Yes. <laughs> and so, when Tyler speaks of you, all three of you, that is so true. Everyone in this room knows that. That he. There's not a lot of things that men truly boast about that bring that smile that every parent knows. And when he talks of each of you that is so apparent and radiant and so I just want to say to you guys that you both are just so fortunate that you have these great families and fathers that love you and you get to share a moment tomorrow with your dad that is beyond priceless and I'm envious because I didn't get to have that my dad passed away too early so really as you're going to cherish everything about that day and really embrace that as well and the advice i would give to both of you is that you're again just so fortunate that you have fathers and, and your mothers but your fathers that love you and if you'll remember in the hard times because they will come if you will love each other in the way that your fathers do with strength unwavering and unconditionally that will sustain you Always. So, here we go. Oh, hey, y'all. Uh, <laughs> Amateur, you don't know me. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. <laughs> uh, the great pleasure of uh, knowing John Meredith for a number of years now. And uh, something to say in this day and age about compassion and friendship, really believing in one another, and can't tell you how much y'all's friendships mean to me over the years. I mean, truly, just the best folks I know. And, you know, I look forward to a lifetime happiness with you all. And, I mean, just really the best people I know. I, I uh, 
moved away, was at Alabama in college. By the time I came back, walking open arms with these folks, parents were say, who's still with say, John and Mary, they say, when they get married, one of these days, <laughs> sure enough, here we are. And I just want to truly thank you all for just being, you know, those compassionate, selfless individuals I know. And it's hard to come by these days. I will live up with the words to tell and look forward to a lot of that happiness. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you all for your Woo! Well done, baby. Well done, baby. <laughs> so um, to keep this really short, because everybody's no, had amazing no, talks. No, this can't be short. Well, there are too many stories, but some of them are not appropriate here. But uh, yeah. <laughs> let's be honest. They've been basically married for the past half decade, and we all know it. And they show such true affection and love for each other that it's, it's really just surprising. I mean, I'm, I feel very blessed just being around and seeing you guys truly love for each other, care for each other, raise your two beautiful children, Bailey and Cooper, who are not here tonight. But look, <laughs> at the end of the day, you guys are truly amazing people and have always been there for everybody. You care for a lot of people, you've helped a lot of people, and look, it's just, it's amazing. And you guys are a beautiful couple, and you always will be, and I wish you all the best. Yes, Love you guys. And I just want to give you, you know, you know, I've known John for a while. Um, we met in third grade. Uh, you know, we were really, really young at that time, but, um, you know, I just know, I've known Meredith and John, you know, for a really, really long time, and, um, you know, I think that it's been such a great journey that knowing John and through his process and, you know, being in a young adult, you know, everyone means, you know, at the young age of learning experiences and John has gone through a lot, but um, <laughs> besides that point, um, you know, John has learned from his experience and I've um, really never thought that he would ever go through this um, phase and he is more of an adult than I ever thought he would be. And he's very, very, he's a successful person and, uh, you know, Meredith is such a beautiful person. I mean, she is such a great figure for John and means so great for John, and John needs that in his life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, this is besides the point, and um, I just want to know that, uh, you know, he has a song background around him and a strong group of friends around him, and I think everyone that has, you know, gone through this whole entire process with John and Meredith, and uh, know that this wedding is going to be, you know, meaning a lot. And uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. all right. all right. um, everybody talk. Meredith was my very first friend in high school, and I never thought that I would be friends with her. And immediately, we had this just random connection. And I also happen to know John. <laughs> so I've been there throughout all of it and I've watched them grow into these amazing beautiful mature people and watch them on each of their own separate journeys come together and it's just been so beautiful and Meredith's always just been the friend to help me grow as a person be there for me no matter what and I've enjoyed just sharing every moment with her and John too <laughs> Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys both so much. Based on this past hour, maybe, of toast, you guys have all the support in the world. Use it. You have it. Use it. Use it. Use it. Use it. We love you guys. We love you. John Miller. Hey, I'm... Uh, John's Uncle David, one of many uncles here, obviously. Um, just real quick, I remember John and as a little boy on the beaches of Cape Cod. And uh, we would, he was a pretty cuddly little guy. We'd sit up and get to, uh, on the couch and watch TV like reruns of the Waltons. And uh, I don't know it, I don't know if you see that in him, but he's pretty cuddly. But then he had these moments where he would go out fishing or catching minnows with me. And he'd take the minnows and he'd like almost eat them at the time. I don't know if he was very hungry or something. John seemed to always be hungry, so maybe he was hungry. But he's quite a fisherman. And uh, 
you know, he was always, like I said, going back to the COVID factor, he was a very gentle guy, and uh, I enjoyed my time with John and walking down and getting comic books at Howie's Market. Thanks, John, <laughs> for those times. And Meredith, I don't know you very well, but I got to know you over the year a little bit. But we live in Colorado now, and certainly anybody that has gone to school in Colorado and enjoys Colorado, you're, you're good with me, for sure. <laughs> And in, in one thing that I think echoes what Bill said a little bit about life and communication as you go through your marriage is very important to listen to each other, uh, super important. And also remember, um, uh, if you want to be, um, what is the saying now? Um, you want to be right or you want to be married? I want to both ways. Thanks again. I've known John since, uh, since college. I was one of the guys that, that brought him into fraternity. Um, being an older guy, we, we had a different relationship back then than we do now. Um, <laughs> so, whereas, whereas back then, can you hear me? Whereas back then I acted more of a coach, I would say. <laughs> um, John was a lot different guy back then. Um, and I loved him, and he was all over the place, and that's what I loved about him. Um, a guy that was always down to do anything at any time, um, and Barb was tied at the hip too, and, and they, were, they, were, they were a rowdy group, and I think we all were. We've all grown up a lot since then, and I think that's what I admire most about John is the potential that he had growing up as, as full of real life now. He's doing so many big things as, as now, where I coached him up back then. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually looking up to him and now for a lot of different reasons. And um, I can't, I can't tell you how much I admire you and you know, all the things you're doing, and how much you've grown up. It's been amazing to see knowing, knowing you from from back then as you're as a freshman coming in. Um, it's been really cool and Meredith. Well, I've only known you for a few years. One of the most amazing people I've ever met, and I think a lot of people have covered it. Um, just the most genuine, nice person that's been excited to see everybody, and um, y'all are perfect guys. So here's to, uh, here's to your future, and best of luck.
pediatrician, oh, looked at John and he said, this child was made for comfort, not for speed. <laughs> 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 I got a lot in common. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't want to, I, I can't get into it because I'm going to cry my eyes out, but, um, dry your eyes out. Bears. What's it? Oh, so much. And, and, I mean, really and truly, people, I tell people, I am in business with my future daughter-in-law, and everybody's like, what? <laughs> like a blend. We were really cool together. We had a lot of fun. And I can't even imagine another person in my life. Meredith and I, I we just we just have so much fun together and I know how good you are for John. And John is a very special guy. And I'm so glad you guys are together and I can't, I can't even, you know, it's just amazing that you are, I have a child that's getting married, it's just amazing to me. It just seemed like yesterday that John was, you know, showing me how football works or, you know, hey, this is how you do your sit-ups, mom, or, you know, <laughs> we're going to go, um, anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm really, really starting to. But anyway, I love you guys so much.